for uh, Joe Bear to give our pledge. Let's pray. Father God, the whole earth is full of your glory. We thank you this morning for uh, a cool change. We, uh, we follow the instructions in your word to come before you asking, seeking, and knocking. And we ask to be filled by your spirit and guided by your spirit. May we be responsive to it. We ask that you'd make us good followers and good leaders. And we ask especially for your blessing this morning on our leaders as we follow them. We ask this in your name. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, additions and deletions. Um, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to delete item 7K. Okay. That'll be off. And, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to add um, 7AA, I believe it is. Okay. Now, what's the emergency on this? Um, well, it's a convenient emergency. Uh, Mr. And Commissioner O'Brien <laughs> is um, taking this um, person off, and uh, I'm putting him on as my utilities person. It's just uh, would like him to, Mr. Whittle. The, uh, I think the next utilities meeting is in March. Is that correct? Scheduled anyway. Please. Yeah. Can we put this on next week's agenda just so we don't add it? It's not an emergency. and We always can do, can do anything if we have three okay. votes. But um, I don't mind that. Um, I do want him to come up to speed, and this is a housekeeping thing, and okay. it doesn't matter to me one way or the other. Okay, I, I don't have any problem. Do you think I have a problem with this? I, I don't, but I, let me tell you, I, I am trying to this year to not allow anything on the agenda as an add-on unless it's really an emergency. And we've got a couple of months before the next advisory meeting, and this could go on next uh, on the consent agenda for next uh, week and be put on. I have no problem. In fact, I've, I've met your uh, uh, the gentleman and uh, I'm very impressed with him. I just I just would like whatever to your pleasure is, Mr. Chairman. I, I, it's no problem one way or the other. Okay, okay. So I'd like to see it go on next week's agenda then. Okay, fine. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Remind me to do that, please. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that was the important That's thing. It, you just yes. scratch it off a list of things to do. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's no proclamations and approval of the minutes. Uh, regular meeting of October 24, 2006. Move to approve. Second. Uh, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Like sign. Motion carries. Uh, approval of the minutes. Uh, regular meeting November 7, 2006. Move, approve. Move to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Like sign. Motion carries. 5-0. Regular meeting November 14, 2006. Approval of minutes. Move to approve. Second. Okay. A motion to second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Like sign. Motion carries. 5-0. Consent agenda? Move to approve the consent agenda. We have a motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. We have a second. Well, that's going to be a quick meeting. Today. Any discussion? Yeah. <laughs> All in favor? Say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Motion carries 5-0. Uh, next is public uh, notices. Would you like to read them, Kim? Notice to schedule public hearings for upcoming board meetings. Memorandum dated um, January 3rd. January 16th, 2007 meeting. Board consideration to approve purchase of agricultural conservation easements, easements on the Sexton Ranch under the County Environmental Land Acquisition Program. This matter is administrative. For the January 23rd, 2007 meeting. Board consideration to approve the purchase of the Sebastian Harbor Preserve site under the County Environmental Land Acquisition Program. This matter is also administrative. Okay. Uh, Department manners, uh, county uh, community development, consideration of status of Waterway Village, Devasta, prior vested units, memorandum dated January 3rd, <coughs> 2007. Good morning. I'm Stan Bowling, County Planning Director. At your meeting of December 5th, 2006, the county attorney's office presented 
some issues of vesting for Waterway Village DRI from the uh, developing being developed by DeVosta. And as part of that presentation in the backup material and, and during the presentation, it was stated that 733 units of the 1,596 units approved with the DRI uh, had already been vested. And the board heard different uh, opinions from legal opinions from different attorneys and, and made the decision five to zero that the DRI development order did not vest Waterway Village. Since that decision, staff has not changed the vesting that was in place uh, before that uh, decision. And staff seeks this morning uh, for the board to either confirm that decision or direct staff to do otherwise uh, than what we've done. Just as a quick recap, uh, on November 9th of 2004, the Board of County Commissioners approved the Waterway Village DRI and the development order uh, and their PD conceptual plan. And that, again, was for 1,596 units, also some neighborhood commercial type of, uh, type of development, but mostly it's residential. On um, April 14th, 2005, the Planning and Zoning Commission granted preliminary PD plan approval for the first phase following the conceptual plan for Waterway Village, and that was for 462 units. Then on January 12, 2006, the Planning and Zoning Commission considered phase, what is now known as phase 2A, that's two, for 271 units. And at that point in time, the issue of, of vesting for the whole project came up. And uh, essentially, the staff's understanding coming away from that meeting was that there was, a, there was essentially a compromise. The Planning and Zoning Commission approved phase 2A, bringing the total number of units with a preliminary PD plan, that's a site plan and a preliminary plan, to 733 units. And that's when the PNZ asked that you know, additional phases, uh, we need outside legal opinion regarding the vesting issue before any more phases would be approved. Uh, that was essentially agreed upon, and, and, and staff, especially the attorney's office, then pursued that, uh, that issue. Uh, based on that decision last January, to have preliminary PD plan approval for the 733 units, um, staff put those units on the concurrency management system, you know, vesting them, and staff later issued uh, concurrency initial concurrency certificates vesting the project. Uh, and as we stated in our report, those concurrency certificates were the five-year uh, certificates uh, expiring March of 2011. One thing that I w would like to do is uh, pass out to you this morning a replacement of the chart. It's the last attachment in the item. It's, it would be page 233 of your packet. And I wanted to go over this chart. We've got some updated information planning staff did from utilities yesterday, and we reconfirmed it this morning in terms of payment for water and sewer capacity charges. Mr. Chairman, um, could I, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry, could I just interrupt for sure. a moment? Mm -hmm. um, I'm real uncomfortable going forward with this. Uh, we, we do not have our attorney here, Mr. Shubin. We do not have our full-time attorney here. Um, Mr. Will Collins, and um, we have someone over here, um, I am sure, taking um, everything down that we might think or say out loud. And I think this is not prudent to move forward at this point without total representation. That's just my personal view. I agree with you, Commissioner. Uh, the only problem staff has, um, and this is why since March of last year we've kind of been in limbo how many trips do we load on our traffic model for to Boston that's the only reason we brought it forward let me say this that uh, prior to the decision of uh, determining that DRIs are not vested uh, staff had loaded uh, loaded on 733 units on as if they were vested onto our model and we've kept that consistent for your information that hasn't changed and that's why I brought this to you today is that it, it could be open for interpretation based on the legal decision that was made in the last couple of weeks so we would do, I'd just like to give the that we're going to stay remain um, 
consistent and just leave the 733 trips on the model for General, right. can I interrupt you just for a moment? I, I know what you're saying. It's all in the backup. All the numbers are in here, and uh, we've read that. And what Mrs. Bowden's point is is that we're getting into something without our legal advice or advisor here with Mr. Shubin and uh, with Will also. And, and, and it's been here since March, so I don't think another week or two is going to make a difference. They're not selling any houses any place anyway. And uh, uh, so I think if we could wait, my position is if, if we could wait for a, uh, an another week or two until we have an opportunity to talk to our staff and go through this in detail uh, with Mr. Shubin, because there's several numbers in here that... And we've been passed out now a new thing. Yeah. So um, I... Okay, I don't have a problem. I just wanted to make sure that we're, I'm just going to remain consistent, so as you know, because every day I have to change that traffic model, whether there's an attorney. That's all I wanted to know, let everyone know we're going to remain consistent how we are, and if the board changes their mind, that's no problem either. Right. So, uh, Mr. Chairman, yes. I'd like to make a motion. Okay. To table this issue for a time certain. Uh, um, could I input on that, please? Most certainly. Um, Postpone, not table, because we don't know what to what um, Mr. Shubin's schedule is. We don't know what our schedule is, and I would rather postpone. Yeah, we can do that because this isn't a public hearing. Simple right. clarification. Correct. Uh, do you want to direct legal staff to coordinate with Mr. Shubin to have him here and see if we can get everybody here on a on a certain date and bring it back at that time? The party Absolutely. motion, Joe. Okay. That's the purpose of the motion. Second. Thank you. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Like sign? Motion carries 5-0. Thank you, Stan. This is going to be a short meeting. I think. Okay, next item is... Can you get there? Public Works. Work order number one, professional civil engineering services agreement with Carter & Associates, Inc. for... Site engineering and permitting of Indian River County Parks Maintenance Complex, Indian River County Project Number 0701, memorandum dated January 2nd, 2007. Move approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Under Public Works Award of Bid Number 2007027, Indian River Drive South Sidewalk Improvements, Indian River County Project Number 0201 LAP agreement, memorandum dated December 27th, found on pages 252 to 263. Jim Davis, Public Works Director. The uh, Public Works Department has completed the bidding process for the Indian River Drive South Sidewalk Project, which is funded by a LAP agreement from the DOT. Uh, partially funded in the amount of $207,000. Uh, the low bidder for the project was L. H. Tanner Construction Corp., which is a company out of Melbourne, Florida, that's doing other work for the county and has successfully performed on those jobs. And staffs recommend you award the bid to <coughs> L. H. Tanner Construction Corporation in the amount of $463,461.39. Any questions? Just, I had um, some um, comment from a, a citizen who was questioning why we don't have the sidewalk on the west side of Indian River Drive. There'd be less driveways to cross and uh, less oak trees and, and less environmental damage. Have we looked at that? Is there a reason why we're on we, the east side? We have. Uh, on the west side is a fairly deep drainage ditch. Uh, west of Indian River Drive. In addition, as you proceed north into the city, the, the sidewalk's on the east side, and it's not safe to cross pedestrians at a mid-block crossing without a traffic signal. Uh, we've also met up there at the Ferndale Lodge. Commissioner Davis and I met with some residents up there, and we feel that uh, most of the community is supportive on the east side. But in order to put it on the west side, uh, the right-of-way would have to be acquired outside that drainage ditch, or we'd have to pipe that uh, deep drainage ditch. Okay. Um, and I am quite confident we will make sure our tree ordinance is applied up there and any trees that 
uh, apply or, or properly uh, accounted for, and yes, sir. we do everything uh, right according to our tree ordinance. Is that yes, sir? Okay. Okay. Yeah, the, no, a little bit of comment on this. Um, I met with uh, Jim Davis and, and some individuals, some concerned uh, residents uh, at the Ferndale Lodge, like Jim said. Also, um, probably about two years ago, about yeah, about it, not quite two years ago, I had the opportunity to meet with the. They call themselves the Shoreliners, and basically that's just the, uh, the citizens and the, uh, just residents, if you will, south of the city of Sebastian, all the way down, uh, basically where any river drive comes into US one. Um, and their main topic was uh, when is the sidewalk going to go in? And the, the, we, it, with it being a lap project, you know the, the issues we had with the Felsmere sidewalk. Finally, that's work free. Um, and they, the, they would have preferred it be on the uh, west side of the road. Um, and it, it, it made a lot of sense to me at the time until I did go up there and look at exactly what you're talking about. And it boils down to the fact we just don't have the right of way. We don't have the space to put it there, and we do on the east, east side of the road. Um, and so I'm glad to see this move forward, and I understand exactly everybody's concerns because when you look at it on the surface, it does make more sense. You would think to be on the west side of Indian River Drive, but unfortunately, when you you know get into the details of it, um, it doesn't. But they are certainly ready for a sidewalk on South Indian River Drive. Okay. Anything further? Get a motion. Move approval. Move Second. Motion. Second. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Motion carries. <coughs> uh, under departmental matters, utility services, Cloud Grove water application. Did Mr. Olson? No, I don't think so. Oh, yes, we did. I'm sorry. Utility services, Falcon Trace subdivision water main extension, developer's agreement, final pay request, and release of retainage, Indian River County project number CDS CCS 2087, found on 264 to 271. Move to approve, Mr. Chairman. We have a motion. Second. We have a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 <coughs> like sign opposed. Motion carries 5-0. Next is Cloud Grove water application. Kim. Thank you. For the record, Eric Olson, Director of Utilities. Um, the Cloud Grove development uh, has been presented before, but uh, basically it lies adjacent to New River County in the southwest portion of the county uh, somewhat uh, adjacent to uh, Oslo Road, somewhat south of that. Uh, the concern that the Utilities Department has uh, is that with any of the future uh, development areas, be it in St. Lucie County or in Brevard County, it's important for us to be aware of the potential impact that may or may not exist with respect to these utilities on our water supply system. Uh, as we pointed out in the alternative Attorney Water Supply Workshop. It's important for Indian River County to take a look at its own future, but equally important that we be in a position to take a look at what may be potential impacts by uh, adjoining systems that may be affecting Indian River County. Uh, Cloud Grove Development is proposing a utility system with a water supply uh, from the upper Florida, which is virtually identical to what is currently used by Indian River County as its supply source, as well as the agricultural system. Uh, what the Utilities Department is recommending is that we submit a letter of, of objection to the uh, Public Service Commission with respect to this development on the potential of its impact to the water system within uh, India River County, not only potentially for the uh, municipal supply system, but also the agricultural supply. What I would be recommending as part of this letter of objection is that the applicant of Cloud Grow be in a position to demonstrate through the appropriate uh, engineering technology that, in fact, there will not be a, uh, an impact associated with the neighboring users. Indian River County spends a lot of time, money, and effort in the planning effort uh, associated with any future systems that we do, and we wouldn't be asking of them any more than we ask ourselves. So that's uh, the proposal. Uh, if the commission approves this, uh, then we could work with the law department to develop a quick letter of objection, send it to the Public Service Commission with copy to the attorney's office representing Cloud Grove. Questions? Eric, uh, five and a half million gallons per day. How many wells would it take to deliver that amount of water? Well, they could probably do it with as little as three wells. Uh, it depends on what size, what capacity each one of the wells, uh, but uh, it's not 
difficult for an individual well to produce uh, upwards of 1,400 gallons a minute, which is approximately 2 MGD. So you could be looking at three, maybe four different wells. They may have some additional wells for reliant backup, that type of thing. So uh, it's, you know, the, the issue is really one of the potential impact. I'm not suggesting that, in fact, there would be an impact, but I think the uh, Really, the importance should be on their uh, engineering technology to be able to show that indeed there is not an impact. Okay, so. good. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I certainly strongly agree with um, staff recommendation and move your recommendation and um, find out all the information you can. Will do. Second that. Under discussion. In, in a second, yeah, under discussion too. Um, go ahead, Bill. Uh, thank you. What a letter of, of objection would trigger would be a proceeding before the Public Service Commission. It would be held here locally. At that time, we would be able to put on any ed any evidence, along with any other substantially affected party. It would be a proceeding under Chapter 120, the administrative uh, law section, um, in a utilities setting. It's usually a pretty highly specialized area. We would suggest that uh, commission go to outside counsel, someone that's experienced in this sort of, of specialty form of law. <clears throat> Include that in the recommendation. I have a couple things, I'll too. Under. Second that. I'll second the second addition. Include that. I, got, I got a couple of comments and some, some concerns. First, I absolutely agree with staff, and I'd, I'd like the letter to be as strong as possible. And if need be, even to make a trip to Palatka to make our point, if that's necessary, to get them down here. The other thing I'd like to request, uh, and this will be, I'll bring this up after Sandra's motion uh, passes or fails on, I'd like to have a joint meeting with St. Lucie County Commission as soon as possible to discuss this problem with Cloud Grove. Okay. <clears throat> I just got a letter from St. John's on our workshop that we had when they were down. It was, it was a nice letter. It was complimentary on our system and everything else. But I'd like to read a couple of excerpts from this letter. First paragraph says, I realize that you are facing significant issues concerning growth and development of adequate water supplies to support growth. So St. John's realizes we have a problem. I've been told, Eric, and I didn't have a chance to talk to you, but, but we've uh, had some problems or at least some concerns of even adding additional wells to our South County water plant. Right. And, and now Cloud Grove wants to come in to Indian River County and take water for St. Lucie County development. If, you know, if they're approved for this. I have a big problem with that. The other thing it says down here, it says, if the 2008 assessment indicates that the Florida Aquifer cannot sus sustain proposed withdrawals through 2030, the area will be identified as a priority water resource caution area and will become a focus of the next district water supply plan. Uh, which is another concern that we've, we've all realized we've got water problems. And it also, then down here, uh, I thought this was interesting. The county's current consumptive use permit for withdrawals for the county source water treatment plant, Westfield, a uh, wellfield, is limited to the uh, quantity because of concerns that withdrawal from this well, uh, wellfield could cause water levels in wells used for citrus irrigation in St. Lucie County and in South Florida Water Management District. And uh, to decline such that, uh, that flows of water allow the placement of pumps and irrigation uh, wells in St. Lucie County. Therefore, the projected water levels decline of about one foot, which were associated with previously proposed increased withdrawals from the Florida Aquifer and from the South Treatment, South County Water Treatment Field, uh, well field. And it would have resulted in significant reduction of natural flow of water in wells uh, used for citrus irrigation. So same problem we're having with the north with the permitting of our wells. We're having not only, now we're going to have, we've already got the problem South County and North St. Lucie County, and this is just going to add to it. And uh, from what I read in the paper, St. Lucie County uh, kind of feels like uh, uh, they have kind of uh, changed their position with what they were telling St. Lucie County. And uh, so I, I think this is moving very rapidly, not only with our water supply, but they're asking for a, a uh, community development district to go to the state legislature. Uh, that's another concern I have, and I, I, I think maybe our two commissions need to get our heads together, and this should be the primary topic that we discuss. So if, if uh, 
But I'll, I'll ask for a motion on that, or you can include it in yours if you would, Sandra. Right, to have well, a joint we'll meeting. Drop. Yeah. Okay. The three, three sections of this motion. Would you second that? <laughs> yeah, I will second uh, the uh, joint workshop. Okay. Thank you very much. Any for further discussion? discussion? Yes. Just for yes. the county's information, Cloud Grove has asked to be on next week's agenda to do a, a presentation. So I just wanted to let you also know that they've, they've made that request. Did we agree to it? Well, <laughs> it's under public. It's, we, we, I'm not allowed to disagree. It's, it's just a, they're just going to do a presentation and give us more information on their on their uh, development. You know, I think they're a little concerned because we oppose their uh, the, the state le their uh, bill at the state legislature. So that's the only reason. So I think it's a little late, but they, they were. They were here, what, uh, six weeks ago, and it was a presentation. Yes, they requested to be on the agenda. So that'd be at the beginning under presentation? Yes. Do we have a time limit? <laughs> <laughs> you can, uh, yeah. the board can direct me to do whatever they would like, and I'll be glad to do it. Further discussion, Mr. Chairman. There's a 30-day deadline in a response uh, of objection, and it's not just the counties that can respond. It can be any substantially affected landowner or any substantially affected party that might be impacted by this action. I would encourage everybody that's uh, watching this on television and everybody that contacted us yesterday uh, requesting to be heard here and their concerns, take note of the fact that... Uh, you should also write letters to St. John's and uh, let them know of your uh, unhappiness about this potential use of our water for a South County or for a South another County South project. And Mr. Okay. Chairman, just as a point of clarification, uh, this would probably the Cloud Grove system would probably fall under South Florida Water Management District. We're right at that juncture point where the two basins delineate themselves like that. I don't know that the county line, though, if the water underneath there delineates. Doesn't know the difference. Yeah. yeah. It, it does taste different. It does. Uh, yeah. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, if I may, it, I've got a, a meeting tomorrow um, with Bob Ulovich, and uh, if you remember the discussion about the 1,400 acres that is in Indian River County, Bob Ulovich is the um, He's the gentleman in charge, basically, of the Sub Sebastian River Drains District and the St. John's Water Control District, which is obviously district different than the one out of Palatka. Um, but the 1,400 acres th that's in Indian River County has concerned me for quite a while as far as what their plans are. And um, but Mr. Ulovich had suggested um, that some changes to the uh, Water Control District um, and at, at, if you remember in the uh, legislative delegation meeting, he's asked the legislature to modify some things to basically change some of the authorities allowed by the water control district. And where I'm going with this basically is, is I, if, if this project moves forward, it's my goal to, to have um, this um, development out there. Uh, utilize the 1,400 acres in Indian River County um, as a reservoir of water and use surface water versus tapping into the Floridian Aquifer. Um, and hopefully we can do it through some legislative changes with um, the water control district that's already there. And um, and it basically would tie in a little bit of what we're talking about, that, that gray area um, between the South Florida Water Management District and the St. John's Water Management District. Um, can I ask a question? Sure. Absolutely. Are you are you referring to this uh, retention of wa surface water of, to be used in St. Lucie County? Um, I, that I'm, I'm not there yet. I don't know. Actually, I, I've got a meeting about it tomorrow. Um, it'll be water that basically the, it, my goal is to it'll be in Indian River County. Now, where it's used, I don't know. Well, we also have um, a <coughs> situation where water is going to be retained in Indian River County and it's not going to be used in Indian River County. So oh, absolutely. This retain, retention in Indian River County for everyone else, you know, I have a concern with. Yeah. Um, um, so. I, I don't know, Commissioner. Like I said, I've got a meeting with him tomorrow, and um, I'll be more than happy to um, basically, if, I mean, do, do a synopsis of the meeting and, and keep the commissioners informed um, through uh, Ken, if you'd like. I, 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 I really don't know where it's going to wind up. I just know that I, like the rest of the commissioners up here, I'm very concerned about that 1,400 acres in Indian River County and very concerned about where they're going to get their water. And so, Well, uh, we do need this workshop and have the expert people and, and the legal staff here. And We will draft the letter for the objection today. I'll get by the yeah, attorney's office on this and go ahead and draft that out this afternoon. It, it, it may even be a good idea to invite St. John's and Southwater 
uh, South Florida Water to, to the workshop that, or the joint meeting. I'd like a joint meeting. Absolutely, you know, absolutely. So we can take action. They've recommended that, in fact. Good. Wesley, uh, I appreciate your grabbing this and going with it. I also thought your recommendation earlier about transferring density into the project south of us was a good idea. Well, so. thank you. And, and uh, I did go as far as ask uh, Commissioner Kraft whether um, they wanted them. And after he got finished laughing, <laughs> uh, he said thanks but no thanks. And that's kind of what this made me take a little bit different take. And um, with it being a PD and if they are going to get approved, of, of some kind, we certainly should be able to uh, do something with the 140 units that are there and have a lot of say in the acreage in Indian River County. Well, and, and it's not just the water, too. I have big concerns about them wanting to extend 106th Avenue and pave it, pave Oslo Road. And when I asked it when they were here a month or so ago with their presentation, I asked them what the benefit was to Indian River County by dumping their traffic into our county. And, and of course, they said that that would give us enough traffic to get the interchange at Oslo Road. I, I think everybody knows where I'm going to be if i got to choose between the two. <laughs> so thank you, Wesley. Do we have any further? I think that's almost, and this, I'm sort of saying this jokingly, but not blackmail, because we need that yeah. period yeah. and not be the right. other reason. We do, yeah. Any further comments? If not, we have a motion on the floor and a second. Would, uh, could, could you repeat the motion? <laughs> All seven well, parts of it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> You want to you want to redo it, Sandra? How you'd like it, or? Well, I'll just repeat it. Okay. <laughs> Got a workshop, a joint meeting. And it was a strong letter. Strongly worded letter of objection. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, there's no more. Uh, all in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed, likes aye. Motion carries 5 0. Thank you. Um, geez, we're to the end already. Uh, under uh, Commissioner Matters, uh, I've, I've asked to uh, amend the code to allow the chairman to make a motion. And let me, let me say before we get into discussion on this, uh, let me make a couple of comments. And um, in the code first, and this was clarification, uh, but in the code it also says that, let me read the, the one paragraph. It says, presiding officer may debate. The presiding officer may not move except for nominations, but may second and debate from the chair, subject only to such limitations of debate as are imposed by on, on all members. And this is the other part that I think is inconsistent. And shall not be deprived of any of the rights and privileges of a commissioner by reason of acting as a presiding officer. Uh, I can tell you, first off, personally, it doesn't make a difference to me whether I can make a motion or not. There's times here where it may be advantageous to make a motion, and there's times here with some real controversial things where it may be advantageous just to watch it and, and sit back and watch the other four members of this commission decide what kind of a motion they should have. So I, I think, uh, but I, I don't understand, and I'm sure some of you had phone calls, uh, I have, and, and there's been some comments on that, that this is a power grab. I can tell you that my intentions would not be to come out and make motions without input from the commission and, and discussing everything, and I, but that you can't speak for the future. I just think that either this should be cleared up or that I, I, I personally don't see any reason why any of the five of us can't make a motion just because somebody's chairman. And I know, Wesley, you probably got some comments about Robert's rules. <laughs> <laughs> it's just that we should use that, but that's okay. But anyway, that's <laughs> whatever the pleasure is of the commission, I will gracefully accept. And I have not a problem with either side. Mr. Chairman, yes. uh, we went ahead and contacted other counties that used chairman's rules such as we do to ask them what they did in situations where the chairman wanted to make a motion. And the response was, you know, overwhelming that the chairman simply passed the gavel to the vice chair, made the motion, participated in the discussion of, of the item, voted, and then 
had the gavel passed back. And I think when you read that second sen sentence in, in the ordinance, that you shall not be deprived of any of the rights and privileges of a commissioner by acting as a presiding officer, I think that's what it zeroes right in on, that if you want to make the motion, you simply announce that you pass the gavel to Ms. Bowden. She presides over that item. After the completion of the item, she passes the gavel back, and the meeting goes on. I, and and I've, I've actually used that with the Airport Development Commission years ago with the City of Vero Beach, uh, but we don't have that provision. In fact, I asked Will uh, uh, back in November if I had that option, and under our ordinance, my understanding is from conversing with Will that that is not an option. So we'd have to either correct that or do something to make that an option. And we certainly can. Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> yes. You know, uh, and it, it's, it, I certainly understand how this, uh, um, if granted, could be abused. Um, but I think that um, there would be public scrutiny to be uh, had tremendously in the event that a chairman did clearly abuse the authority to be able, and the power, to be able to uh, to make a motion. And, and, you know, clearly according to Robert's rules, in a large assembly, the chairman would only vote to make or break a tie. However, we are not a large organization, and by law, you have to vote as the chair. Um, and and with, with that being the case, I don't have a problem with granting you the authority to be able to participate in the, in the form of a motion. Um, and therefore, if, I don't know if you, if you would like a motion for me to make the motion to be able to let you make a motion. I'd be more than happy to motion that. <laughs> I'd like to weigh in here, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> well, um, I'll second the motion to make a motion to allow the chairman to make a motion I'll second that motion. <laughs> under, discussion. Under, dis under discussion. Okay. Uh, yes, I, we have had a lot of discussion on this, and the paper has weighed in on yes. it. Yes. Um, I've done all three. In the chairman of the school board, um, you had an opportunity to make a motion if you wanted to, to pass the gavel. And I doubt that I ever did that. Um, you're a facilitator as chairman. And um, there is a um, time up here where if the chairman would um, like a motion, all you have to do is say, um, commissioners, um, I'll entertain a motion on thus and such. And if you um, get a motion, that probably would mean that your motion originally would get a second. <coughs> if you don't get a motion, you probably wouldn't have gotten a second anyway. Um, I have also been a mayor of Bureau Beach, and we couldn't make a motion. Um, since I went back and tried to look the history up of this too, I think since 19, early 1990s, maybe 91, um, and that's as far back as I was able to go, um, the chairman has not made a motion. Um, I think that um, it quite certainly can be abused. Mm -hmm. And I think in the two years I've been here, there have been uh, differences on this commission that I doubt if. Um, <laughs> I hesitate to say this, but I believe it. If um, one of the com um, chairmen um, would deny, if point out that that's not me, would you please? Yes, <laughs> absolutely, it is not you. Uh, one of the past chairmen might have denied and <clears throat> moved forward with that power, um, and it becomes political up here. And everybody isn't as cohesive a, a board as this one is right now. And of all boards that I think this commission has had in, in the recent future, this one really strives to be um, statesman. And so, therefore, I think that if you want to really make motions and you want to do that, I'd be happy to change with you, and I'll become chairman, and you can become vice chairman. Well, that's Maybe next year. Maybe. <laughs> but, but I really think the tradition of this um, has served us well. And if you need to have a motion, just put it out there. I would, I would be happy even to have the ability to pass the gavel if there's something that, that whoever the chairman is feels that strongly about. Uh, at least to have in this ordinance the, the right to pass the gavel to the vice chair to make the motion as Bill uh, described. In fact, but one thing I will say, just when I was on the Airport Development Commission back in the 70s, I asked for a joint meeting with our committee, which was an advisory group in the city council, and pleaded for quite a while for somebody to make a motion, and nobody would do it. Uh, I had no idea about Robert's rules back then, and somebody said that you can pass the gavel and do that. I, in fact, did that, thinking that it would die for lack of a second. I not only got a second, it passed unanimously. So you never really know. 
But even if we could pass the gavel, I, I don't really have a, it's not a big deal to me. It's just I was reading through this and I said it's inconsistent. And I also didn't see any reason that you should give up that ability. And, uh, but even if, if, uh, I, I can go with whatever the commission wants, with, with, with you, Sandra, or with Wesley, or whatever. But I, I would like the opportunity to pass the gavel, at least, if somebody feels strong enough about it to pass the gavel and make the motion. Do I have Mr. to Chairman, accept just, the gavel? Well, I don't know. That'd be in the ordinance. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do we not have that in our ordinance and bill? Will we have to change some wording to allow that, or is that just kind of an understood thing? Or what's the, the legal? Robert's, that's just Robert's rule. I'm, yeah, I, 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 once it's ingrained, Wesley, it's so hard. I know. To it, it, I mean, it's, it's I just oh. basic. It, it's, it's Robert's rule states that if you wanted to do to participate in that form, you do just pass the gavel. It typically, goes to the vice president or the vice chair, who assumes those responsibilities. And after the vote's taken, then the that the you get the responsibility of the chair back. That's and and sometimes you don't get the gavel back. That's right. I was going to say, well, you and get so, it back. Uh, there is there is a downside. There is. I mean, so if you don't understand the whole situation here. Oh, right. um, well, I think I think you know to simplify it too, and that's why I wanted because our policy is chairman rules unless three votes say he doesn't. So under our current ordinance. I would, in fact, I almost feel like we're into Robert's Rules now because we have such debate about operation here, and that usually only happens at meetings where they've adopted Robert's Rules. <laughs> but uh, if I did pass the gavel and three members said, no, you can't, then I guess I couldn't. But I guess if I wanted to and three members didn't say you couldn't, I could. No, that, that's not a, that, it's not a vote. Or, or it, according to Robert's Rules, you pass the gavel when you would like to. I'm not it's talking not, about Robert's Rules. I'm okay. talking under our situation Jerry's here. Uh, Chairman's, Chairman's Rules. Rules. The way oh. our ordinance reads. And, That's and, my concern. Uh, you know, Mr. Chairman, if, if, if just the ability to pass the gavel would uh, create a little bit of harmony here, I, I think that that's probably a good way to go if, if it's not in our ordinance. And the reason why I say that is because um, since we don't use Robert's Rules and use Chairman's discretion, you have the opportunity to accept a motion or not. And therefore, basically, what that would do, if we if we went the way of you making a motion, um, it would be. I mean, I could make a motion, or anybody here could make a motion, and could get a second, and uh, th then you go ahead and make a motion, or the chairman can make a motion, and um, there would not be any debate. And we don't have the opportunity, by the way, to amend. Would you repeat the that? motion? No. <laughs> but we we don't have the opportunity would, to amend like the motion. To, you know, since. Um, <coughs> And I'm not talking against this. I, I'm not taking this personal. I, but, listen, but I, if this was something that we all wanted to do, the three of us, because we've served for t this is our third year, um, we could have done this before. Why is it all of a sudden now crucial that um, the chairman make a motion, be able to make a motion? I don't, I don't understand how we've gotten this far. We were only in our fourth meeting, and the new uh, it's, it's group not. here, and so I just don't understand the, the emergency here. Let me try to explain. First, it's not an emergency item because I put it on in the time frame a lot. And secondly, as I said earlier, I can live with whatever the pleasure of the commission is. I read through this. I thought it was inconsistent. I asked at one time about passing the gavel. That's not an option. And and it, nothing crucial about this at all. I think things have, in fact, I haven't had any problems with, with any of this throughout the years I've been a member of this commission or observe this commission. I, I'm just, it was kind of a, a housekeeping matter, and I, I personally didn't see a problem with any one of the five of us making a motion. So I don't care whether you approve it or disapprove it. I'll live with either. I just brought it back for input and direction from the commission. Why don't we do that? Why don't we put, I mean, the ordinance then to say that you can pass the gavel? Would that, is that? Well, if you can pass the gavel, um, say we're not up here again uh, after two years. It's a new group, some mm -hmm. of us. Mm -hmm. And um, that chairman has the desire to um, run rampant, which can happen, and you can't even be recognized to make a motion because the chairman can make a motion. Well, he might I mean, it, it can. R there's reasons I mean, for it. There absolutely there, is. There is. And there's history behind this, and um, I'm just really um, not in favor of it. Do, it, do you want to be able to pass the gavel? Is that what you're looking for then, Commissioner? Or so that you can make a motion and you're saying that the ordinance doesn't allow that? Or, I mean, I don't know if the ordinance prohibits it is probably the best way to, to, to ask the question. I, I think for the sake of clarity, if that's what the, the position of the board is, that they want to be able to allow the chairman to make a motion, we could amend the ordinance to provide for the clarity that... The chairman does that by passing the gavel, participates in the debate, 
votes and upon the completion of the, devo uh, of the vote that the vice chair would then pass the gavel back to the chairman. Well, then the chairman has all authority. How's that? Because the chairman recognizes somebody who's going to make a motion. And if you're never recognized, not that Gary would do this, but this can happen, then the chairman makes all the motions. By passing no, no. the gavel, he's recognizing himself. Well, no, but the, what, I think what Mr. DeBraw is saying, though, is, I mean, I, I kind of like it because what Bill's, Mr. DeBraw is saying is moving us one step closer to Robert's rules. I know, and I don't, I don't <laughs> think that we could function so, at all right. under Robert's rules here. Well, now you've put that in a whole new light, Wesley. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I, listen. But, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, Joe. I, I bl thank you for the recognition. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that uh, as the chairman, you are the steward of the quorum and order here at the county commission and I believe that by making motions you may cloud that authority and responsibility for the public trust and it's not you individually it's anyone who holds that position of authority that is elected by their peers and I believe that this issue might cloud it even further for discussion okay. Well, would you like to? Uh, what's your? What do you want the uh, do we the ability to pass the gavel? I, I don't. I don't see an ordinance that prohibits that, and I don't. I think chairman's discretion would, in fact, allow that, which is the, are currently our policy. Well, let's don't you know cloud the issue here. It's not. It's the chairman would like to make a motion. Mm -hmm. Period. Mm -hmm. However, he does that. Whether he passes the gavel or we just give him that authority, is. He doesn't care which way. I don't. I really don't. Right. Okay. So it's not passing the gavel. Passing the gavel is just the art of the move. Uh, yeah. it, it, so don't, it still is, is well, okay. the chairman making a motion or not making a motion. Yeah, but whenever he passes the gavel, he's no longer the chairman. Is what Mr. I'm saying, Mr. So. Attorney, can I withdraw this item with a motion and a second? On the floor? <laughs> well, I'll, I'll, I'll withdraw my second. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's, that's, well, oh, I don't even want to go in what should happen next, but that's do, good. Let's go. Do we need to clarify the ordinance if that was I, your major You want to leave concern? it alone? I, I don't have a problem with the ability to pass the gavel. I think that's proper. Okay, I don't either. I, I think that's have, proper. Yeah. No. Um, and if I, I'll, I, in fact, I'll go ahead and make a motion that we have, give the chairman the ability to pass the gavel and participate in if, if he so chooses. I didn't realize we were prohibited from doing so, and if we are prohibited from doing so, it defies logic to do so. Okay. So that's a motion. That is a motion. And, and that the motion is to change the ordinance to allow passing on the gavel. I, I don't think it needs. I don't think it needs an ordinance change. Personally, I think it's chairman's well, discretion. Is no, we have maybe. To read the well, will according okay. to will, I do need. We need. We need to change it if we're, if we're going to allow that because I, I've had conversation with him. And I have too. Okay. Uh, I'll second. Changing the ordinance to uh, allow passing of the gavel. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? I think this is a mistake, gentlemen. I concur. Geez, it looks like I get to break the tie. <laughs> <laughs> That's your job as chairman. <laughs> All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Aye. aye. Motion carries three to two. What else would you like, Mr. Chairman? <laughs> well, you know, if we hadn't had this item on, this would have been a very quick meeting. <laughs> uh, and, and I may never make a motion I, so, uh, until I'm not chairman, of course. Well, okay. <laughs> Next is under Commissioner uh, oh, Stillmine. Resolution of uh, support of urging the Florida State Legislature to address a special session beginning January 16, 2007. The extreme insurance rate increases imposed upon the residents of business owners in Florida. And memorandum dated January 2nd found on pages... 276 through 280. Move approval for this resolution to go forward. Mr. Absolutely. Chairman. I'll second that. Good okay. idea. Yes. And, uh, Any? Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Motion carries 5 0. Under Commissioner Bowden, uh, update report on legal services. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, we have had a. Um, in our previous meeting, a situation where we had our uh, lead attorney uh, take a leave of absence. And during that time, um, a scope of services has come forward, to, um, and I'll pass that out. I didn't have this beforehand. Let me have one, please. For your, um, anyway, it's out there, and this is what it is. Um, since the, um, 
conversations and the um, decision to um, look for an interim um, city uh, county attorney, um, we have had our um, county attorney uh, return. So that is really sort of moot. Um, and um, that's where we are right now. And I, but I did want to do a complete report on this, and this uh, scope of services has uh, been out and come forward. So I do present it. I have given a copy to um, Will and uh, um, Collins, and I have also given a copy to um, Joe Beard. And we have a copy. <coughs> um, would, would you like to read that, Sandra, for the sake of the public scope of services? Okay, Mr. Chairman. Um, scope of services. An act as special counsel to the Board of County Commissioners on Planning and Zoning Matters. Duties to include attending commission meetings when planning and zoning matters are on the agenda and ad advising the commission thereon. Um, in addition, the special counsel may attend planning and zoning board meetings and advise the board on the matters before it as necessary and perform such other duties as the commission may otherwise request. Okay. Any comments? No, I don't. I'm, I am just. I don't and have a comment. And this is by. I'm just bringing this forward because it's out there just to clear the air and to make a total report. Well, I j I'm sorry. Joe, did you have I just wanted to know, is this initiated through workload? Is this initiated through skills and abilities, expertise, the type of uh, assignment or task that we're being confronted with currently with development? I think it's initiated by the fact that I was absent for two weeks and concerned about how long I would be gone. Uh, there, there may also be, in my mind, a misapprehension about the type of legal advice that you get on planning and land use matters. It's, it's always been my policy to say as little as possible when you have a planning or land use matter in front of you. What you're trying to decide in all those cases is whether the matter before you is consistent with a comp plan and whether uh, an application is consistent with our land development regulations. And what I as an attorney am always listening to here is there's substantial evidence to support one side or the other. And I'm not looking to advise you which way to go. I'm trying to make sure that the record supports whatever decision you make. So in most cases, a land use attorney is not saying you should do this or you should do that. They're simply listening to make sure that whatever decision that you as a collegial body make is defensible and that there's something in the record that, that supports it. A court will not substitute its judgment for yours on these land use matters if there's something in the record to support whatever position you take. Legal counsel does not uh, say this is what you should do or what you shouldn't do. I think uh, in the past, if we have needed outside counsel, we've done so on a case-by-case -case, uh, basis, such as the Disney Ocean Sands matter or the pending ordinance cases and that served us well. I don't think on a on a meeting by meeting basis it would make sense for you to have two attorneys one that's advising you specifically on land use and one that's uh, sitting there saying nothing. I would feel a little awkward uh, not advising you on a land use matter if if I thought someone was giving you bad advice. And then you'd have the situation where a record might go up with two different legal opinions, which is not helpful whatsoever. Uh, for those of you that don't know, my background is in planning and land use. I have a, a master's degree in urban planning. I worked in that field for 10 years before I became a lawyer. Um, uh, I've handled I think 15 or 20 cases for the county and have lost only one, which we really deserve to lose, and sometimes that happens. <laughs> and uh, the um, I'm, I'm board certified in local government law. I was one of the first nine in the state to pass that certification. I, I don't think you really need to 
go out to get a special counsel on a regular basis for every issue and every meeting that comes up, I think uh, we'd be better served just to keep the current practice when cases of first impression like the DRI vesting came up, we got outside counsel. There are no cases on that. It doesn't hurt to have uh, another mind thinking about it. Or with, when there's uh, a lot of litigation coming up, like out of a pending ordinance, to have outside counsel makes sense because our staff is so small it's hard to gear up for litigation on a regular basis. But uh, I'm back, and I don't think you need an extra lawyer full-time. And it's certainly good to have you back. Thank you. Yes, it is. Thank you for coming back quickly. <laughs> yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, it, First of all, any, any, I'm just, go ahead. I'd like to ask some questions. Uh, when we on planning and Donna Keys, Sebastian, um, Indian River County Planning and Zoning, when we get a package before us from staff, just like you get a package before you, there's normally a recommendation. Staff recommends da -da -da -da, approval because of. There are some counties that their recommendations, staff says, if you want to approve this, you can approve it based on these recommendations. If you don't want to approve it, you, you can disapprove it based on these facts. We're always just told staff recommends approval. So if you do not take staff's approval, what you have done, I think, Staff has now set this up for somebody to take us to court because you didn't take staff's approval. I'm not sure I made myself clear, but we always, you know, wind up in court because we didn't take staff's position on it. But we also should have been given the capability to discern the reasons the project should not have been approved. Ms. Um, Keys, I, I, I understand where you're coming from. I, I think that the members of P&Z need to take a look at staff as another opinion. It's their opinion that the evidence presented to them constitutes substantial evidence uh, as to all the elements that it conforms with the comprehensive plan and meets all the code recommendations. If during the course of the presentation and the testimony offered by the other uh, parties involved, if you find substantial evidence that goes against staff recommendation, you're certainly free to vote that way. Well, I don't have, I'm not an attorney, so there are, I don't have that ability on I, some things. I, I understand, but I mean, as a commissioner, you're sitting there and you're listening to the presentation and you're listening to the testimony that's prevented, presented, and you're going to form an opinion as to, you know, which is the, the better way to go, which are the facts that you think are most pertinent. Mr. Christopher? Mr. DeBrawl, I, I really think that's disingenuous. George. George Christopher, Planning and Zoning. I think you're being disingenuous. I don't uh, think so. I think what uh, Mrs. Key said is the staff reviews a record, reaches its conclusion on which way it go, wants to go, and we hear that one side. And neither you nor Mr. Collins, when you're sitting there, uh, volunteer that there was an issue here that could have come down this way or could have come down that way and there's a judgment involved if we ask a specific question of you or Mr. Collins we get an answer but only if we ask a specific question and what we're faced with as Mrs. Keyes said is a staff recommendation now in those cases where the public gets involved you may get another side heard but otherwise, there isn't any. We're told it's consistent. We're not. There's no suggestion. There's any room for disagreement. You don't provide any background to us as to where there may be room for disagreement. You don't provide us any guidance. And I have. I think Mrs. Keys is saying that uh, we have found it uh, sorely lacking. In uh, we're sort of rubber stamps, or we're off on our own. Ms. Keys, am I? Well, if, if I can respond, I, I'm not being disingenuous at all, Mr. Christopher. Uh, I mean, we sit there, uh, Will or I, mostly Will, with his years of experience on 
planning and zoning. He just explained to you how he feels his role is as an attorney. I mean, if you disagree with the role that he thinks should be conducted by the county attorney as an advisor to the planning and zoning board, that's fine. I think that's good discussion to see what more you would like to be informed, what different things you might want staff to present. But, I mean, we're not being disingenuous. I don't think you're a rubber stamp at all. I disagree. Can I ask a question, Mr. Chairman? At what point, or is there a point in the background information, does the attorney's office get with staff and hammer some of this out? It would be on an ongoing basis as the issues arise. Staff would invite you? Bob and Stan are frequent visitors, if not daily, to our offices on issues. Yes, and vice versa. I mean, our office is very open and accessible to anyone. I think that's also, I don't want to be accusing, but we've had two instances in the last three months. We had a major legal issue two months, three weeks ago, where there was a major case involved. I visited your office four hours before our meeting, and to my knowledge, that was the first time you had focused on the issue. We had a staff paper. Yes, Mr. Christopher, and I'm going to stop you right there. That's correct, and that's when Mr. Collins first announced that he was going to be on a leave of absence. So if our office was in just a little bit of turmoil, I'd apologize for that, but I'd certainly ask for your understanding with that issue. I'm sorry, sir. The paper was prepared ten days before. You just said the staff visits you all the time. That paper had been prepared ten days before and apparently had not been reviewed. Two months ago. By myself, Mr. Christopher, by myself. I see. Two months before, there was a paper that spoke about the fact we were compelled to make a decision. Then when it came before the commissioner, and Commissioner Bowden asked Mr. Collins whether we were compelled to go to a decision, Mr. Collins said we were not. Yet P&Z sat there and made its vote on the fact that we were compelled to go that way. Perhaps it's a matter of being too busy, and perhaps that's what's got to be dealt with. I'm certainly not. I think you folks are too busy. I think you are overwhelmed. I also feel very strongly that P&Z is not getting adequate legal advice at its meetings. Mr. Chairman. Yeah, sure. And Ms. Keyes, am I interpreting this correctly? You're looking for a more proactive or preemptive stance from our lawyers? Are you looking for written interpretation on all matters, or would you like a stronger relationship and representation? That would be very helpful. An interpretation from the attorney on both sides of each issue. That would be wonderful. There's zoning issues that come before us that, you know, staff will recommend that we approve a zoning change. And then a few weeks later, there's another one similar to it, but staff advises us that we should not approve the zoning change. It's all dependent upon certain circumstances that maybe we should have an opinion from the attorney in addition to staff's, or an opinion on both sides of the issue. I think what you're looking for is Mr. Collins. I'm sorry, Will Collins, county attorney. I don't think it's the planning staff's role or the legal staff's role to say you should or you shouldn't approve this or deny that. I think it's their role to analyze the facts of the application and say whether it meets our codes and our plan or not. And then if they come to the conclusion that it does, the planning staff is trying to be an impartial advisor to you, not an advocate one way or another. I think if the planning staff opposes a project, nine out of ten cases it won't get to you or it will be modified before it does get there. The staff, whether it's legal or planning staff, is not to tell you 
what to do. It's to present as many facts as possible. And if you feel that uh, the planning staff recommending approval precludes you from denying it, that's not the case. It's only the case if no one stands up and says, no, that's not right. They don't meet this criteria. This is why they're inconsistent with the plan. This is the land development regulation that they meet. If there's any regulation that they don't meet, and that's a part of the record, you have the basis to deny an application. But I really don't think we should be telling you as policymakers what's a good planning decision if if the record supports approving it, the staff will say so. If someone else comes from the audience and says it doesn't, you can deny it based on what you hear from the audience. But uh, I'm just very concerned that we should not be the basis for your decisions. It should be the facts and the evidence presented at the hearing that says whether you think it's a good idea to approve a project or deny a project. Mr. Collins, I don't believe that uh, PNZ is looking for a decision from you as much as legal direction. They are treading on very serious, uncertain waters of recent times, and I, I believe that they are looking for a more proactive legal approach so that they well, we, can be best we can, guided. We certainly can tell them the standard of review in a, you know, approving or denying any particular project, what the courts would look to, what the case law says they must be able to find or not find, and we, we typically do that. Mr. Chairman? Uh, I think one way I'm looking at it is that I think the feeling is that we always feel we're on the defensive, that there's a lot of uh, well-paid, you know, high-powered private uh, land use attorneys out there, and they keep bringing these gray areas before the PNZ or before the board and threats of lawsuits and, and uh, stenographers and such. And, and it always feels like we're on the defense. We're always having to backpedal and, and, and we're under attack, basically. And I think kind of a more better approach that might resolve this for everybody concerned is I think we just need to be more proactive in reviewing our ordinances and making sure they're keeping up with current changes in land use so that our ordinances are very tight, that there shouldn't be any gray area, that we do a constant review of the land use changes and, and regulations, so that our, our ordinances are strong, they're supported, and therefore the, the issues coming before P&Z won't be such a gray area where you need that additional guidance because we're going to make sure our ordinances are very tight and, and good to go. Well, uh, I agree, Peter. I, 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 I agree with... Well, Mr. Collins just said, but that isn't what we're getting. What we're getting is the staff honestly reaching a conclusion that this project should be approved and then making the case for it as if they were the developer. That's the problem. And then what we're faced with, you don't have any choice here. It's consistent with the comp plan. We know of no facts to suggest it's inconsistent. It's a developer approach. Now, maybe we're, maybe we're going down an avenue here that I know Mr. Baird has been suspicious. I've tried to head down. State law says P and Z is supposed to have its own staff. If you look at the papers, who's our staff? Mr. Baird is listed as our staff. Perhaps we need our own advisors because when a paper comes to us, when a project comes to us, the staff isn't saying, well, you can find it's consistent with the comp plan on these facts, or if you find these facts, you're going to find it's not consistent, or you may want to take into account this, or you may want to take into account that. That's not an area, it's a question of the law being unclear. There's huge gray areas here. And we have nobody presenting to us what the alternatives may be. I th so what do we do? We sit there and we have to say, we head in the sand, we agree. Or we have to take on the staff and say, we, we fundamentally disagree with your conclusion. And then what are we doing? We're going by the seat of our pants, possibly. And, and uh, maybe what the answer here is, our own staff. Uh, we've had issues in traffic, major issues. 
We've had major legal questions come up. Mr. Collins likes to sit back, and I'm not being critical when I use that term, sit back, and only when he's asked does he come forward and, and say so. I mean, he lets the, lets, that's his theory of what uh, the chief lawyer, how he should act, and, and I can understand that. Uh, but I think we need more than that. Joe Baird, County Administrator. I'd like to say that uh, maybe staff should add, we could look at, because if, if you feel that way, I think we, staff always is going to give their professional opinion. That's what they're there for and their opinion on it, and that's all it is. Maybe we need to add another section in our in our, dra in our item saying, you know, analysis and uh, other alternatives. And uh, maybe we should talk about how you, you know, you feel. I think a lot of it is subjective. Staff has usually met hours with the developers. They haven't got what they wanted. Um, traffic issues, let me address that. Traffic issues are a, a problem across the state of Florida. It's not only this county. Um, we hired a consultant because of that and tried to address those. And I think Commissioner O'Brien was also right in the fact that we had an unusual year when you passed 13 pending ordinances overnight. You are going to have some problems because you are reacting to those changes. And I think he's right that we, staff, it was a very hard time when they're done that quickly, 13 pending ordinances. We're trying to pick up the pieces on how to react. So it was an unusual year, but I, I think that we probably should have a, a meeting with staff, the PNZ, we can have uh, as part of the meeting to discuss maybe what you would like to see more um, of or, or the change first. I think staff just has always given their opinion. I think what you're looking at is a, we want to show other alternatives and analysis on there, more of an, uh, a section for analysis and writing. So I, I, Mr. Bear, I, th I think that could be very useful. But I think I'm saying more. Uh, I'm saying uh, uh, somebody, people that report to the PNZ that look at it and raise the issues. Uh, I think it would result in a, in, a, in, a, in a far better decision. It would bring things out. Um, and I'm not being, this isn't being critical of staff. Uh, I think you're right. They, they look at what the developers have to say, then they reach their conclusion, and then they make their case. So we're just getting a case. We're getting, there's no other position being presented. And now you're suggesting the staff that has concluded A is correct, they're going to do a section in the paper it's going to say, well, in case we're wrong, here's B. Uh, it's not going to be done with uh, open heart and, and, and a, a clear mind. Uh, 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 Bob Keating is an exceptionally capable person. He reaches his conclusion, and he's going to advocate it. And, and he should. I'm confused. I, and, I'm not, and I'm not in any manner suggesting Mr. Keating operate any other way. But I am suggesting we need some independent viewpoints. Yeah, because I'm confused. You you want your opinion because whoever you're going to hire is going to give their opinion. It's That's kinda... correct. And then we can make a then the P and Z can make a judgment, and the commission will have the benefit of that as well. <clears throat> George, I, I think the way I see this is is and, and I'm listening to this and. Uh, Staff does come in and draw conclusions. They go through, as you are well aware, go through quite a process to reach those conclusions. Dealing with the developer, we're talking property issues, and and then the people that actually look at that and decide whether staff's conclusions are correct or incorrect is the Planning and Zoning Commission, and and whether they disagree or or whether they choose to agree with it. But that that's where the debate comes in. I'm not sure. And maybe I'm misunderstanding something, but it, it's it's like, uh, are you asking for like a, say, a planner, or a a lawyer, planner, whatever, to analyze staff's position or legal position from the county from another perspective before it comes to the planning and zoning commission? 
Well, this has grown. And if, uh, this, if we were going to do that, hypothetically, uh, you know, would, would you need P and Z? They could come and present both arguments in front of the county commission. To me, the, the, and I'm not trying to be facetious, but the, to me, the Planning and Zoning Commission, that, that, in my mind, and maybe I'm wrong, but in my mind, that's kind of what their oversight is, is to say, this is what staff's done and legal, and we're sitting here as a, a lay board, as P and Z commissioners, to evaluate that and then make recommendations and pass it on to the county commission, in, in, in most of the cases that we're discussing. I, am I well, maybe Mrs. Keyes and I are, 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 are exhibiting a lot of frustration that we've experienced over the last two years, or at least I have. I, I and uh, maybe that's what's leading to a lot of what's being said. What started here was on the legal issue. And on the legal issue, my experience has been that uh, our attorneys are overworked. Uh, one, we're dealing with extremely difficult legal issues that have tremendous legal implications. Uh, I practice law. I practice law for major corporations, and I was continually brought in as special counsel. There was a general counsel. They ran the corporation. They did all the legal work, but when they came up to tough issues, they brought in people that that's all they worried about. No question Mr. Collins has the background. The general counsels of the corporation have the background, but they're not working on those issues every single day. And that's what I think is needed, both for the expertise and because of the lack of time. <coughs> now, it, I think Mrs. Keyes expressed a frustration, which goes to the presentation and the way we're being uh, uh, presented with materials. Mr. Baird tried to address that, but there are, two, there are probably two issues. Uh, and I think there, uh, there's a need at both ends. Mr. Chairman. I, I would think, let me just say one thing, Will, and then I'll come to you. I, I, I agree with one thing, that uh, I, I was here in the 80s, and Will, your memory's probably, but, but we had four attorneys, I believe, and sometimes four and a half with a part-time attorney. Uh, and, and I can't remember all the players, but we had O'Brien, we had you, we had Charlie, we had, uh, we had uh, Bruce Barquette, uh, we had... Uh, uh, I don't think we ever had more than three at a time. We, we, you didn't. I thought we did. I thought we had a, at least three and a half then. But we were, and, and I said to somebody the other day, either we're a whole lot busier now than we were in the 80s, Definitely. or I'm moving a lot slower, one or the other. And, and I think, I think uh, with the legal things that come up and the things that, that the problems we've had and, and, and some of the uh, things that have occurred, I, I do think that it's because we don't have enough legal staff. I, I get down to your office and the office of your attorneys, and it's, I mean, you, you're really backlogged with stuff. I, I think I agree with Mr. Christopher that the, we as general counsel can do most of the work, but you call in special counsel as needed. I just don't think you need special counsel at every single meeting that the PNC or you have. I think you call in the special counsel as we have in the past when, as Peter says, you're put on the defensive, you bring the expertise in, and you win those cases with the special counsel. But to have two sets of attorneys at every meeting, to me, would be very counterproductive. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't foresee that myself. But let me, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Mensing, you want You had your hand up. But this, this, again, this isn't a, a public hearing. But in the spirit of allowing the public to be heard, we're, we're going to discuss these things. All right. As I understand, and correct me if I'm wrong, if the PNZ makes a negative decision the party involved can bring it before the commission anyway. Is that correct? They have the appeal right on both sides. Okay. You as commissioners are elected by we the public. You pick these people who volunteer to serve under the guidelines that are laid out. Uh, two of your counts are people I've known for a number of years. I have the very highest regard. The third one I cannot say anything negative about. You know, They're very competent they're very level-headed. It's probably the best group of lawyers you've had here. But if you have people on the PNZ who are not capable of working through the frustration of what staff says, staff says, okay, it's okay if uh, Gary Wheeler wears a striped tie and uh, Mrs. Bowman wears a 
pearl necklace to the commission meeting, they can't look at that and say, well, jeepers, that striped tie doesn't go with uh, your yellow shirt. I'm just being facetious, Mr. Wheeler. Uh, if they can't look at this and say, do it or don't, they should leave and you should pick people that can do it under the current guidelines. And as far as questioning your attorneys, I'm insulted by both of them. Will Collins is probably the finest attorney that this county's ever had, and Bill DeBrawl is a very level-headed individual that I've known since before he was an attorney. And uh, I'm really insulted at the comments oh. against him, and I hope that you will, you know, look at whether you need a new PNZ or uh, you need to take, you know, and change staff. Thank you, Mr. Messing. Mr. Paladin? Good morning, Joseph Paladin. Um, I'm chairman of the Growth Awareness Committee. I'm also a local developer. I, I sort of resent the implication that Mr. Baird made that your legal counsel's uh, being overburdened is because of the 13 pending ordinances that the Growth Awareness Committee brought forth and five commissioners approved five to zero. Uh, we don't really have any uh, litigation involving those 13 pending ordinances. Uh, we passed those uh, 13 pending ordinances along with the council, um, and we worked very hard. I got some of my members back here and, and behind me here, and we worked hours and hours, weeks and weeks, putting those uh, different ordinances together. And if we didn't do that, many of the buffers that you see out there today, many of the setbacks that we've put forth, Many of the things as far as bonding out and not being able to bond out a whole subdivision, a lot of the things that you're using today and you're realizing the benefits from, you wouldn't have. And we have, there's a couple very small changes that we made after we passed those 13 pending ordinances, uh, which was very simple, and we, were, we did that without going to court. So I don't think that the implication that the 13 pending ordinances confused the issue I think what it did is it raised the standard in this county higher than any other county I know. And so I wanted to make a comment on that. Secondly, the one pending ordinance that we have out there that we did have some litigation on, uh, we haven't lost any of those cases in court. Uh, all those cases were dismissed. And I would venture to debate anybody, not at this time, of course, uh, that if that pending ordinance wasn't in play and it's starting to show forth, that we would be involved in a lot more litigation than we were in those four cases. And we would be in a lot worse shape right now today without that pending ordinance, not talking one of the 13, but talking about the pending ordinance as far as vesting. And getting to the legal counsel here, I, I too agree that Mr. DeBraw has been very accommodating to me. He's always seen me when I needed to see him, give me legal advice and help me. And Mr. Will Collins, he's, he's excellent. And I've never had too many dealings with Miriam, but these two guys I have dealt with almost on a weekly basis. And I think that what Ms. Keyes and what Mr. Christopher and several other PNZ commissioners that I've spoke with, it's not so much what they're told, it's what they're not told sometimes, how it's not defined. For instance, uh, well, you know, it's on the four-year plan. Okay. But it doesn't mean a darn thing unless it's on the third-year plan. If it's not on the third-year plan, it can stay on the four-year plan for 20 years. So they need some sort of background as to what they're being told, I think. Uh, for instance, okay, they've entered into an agreement to sign a, a, a proportionate share agreement. You can enter into an agreement and never sign it. You know, you need, like, your attorney there to point out the negatives before you make a position in public that someone can use against you. And one of the first things they would say is, hey, your staff recommended this. Hey, your P&Z said this. I think that's sort of what they're looking for, is the untold information that only uh, maybe idiots like myself take enough time to read every night so we know some of the pitfalls uh, to kind of point those out. But to point them out after a hearing, to point them out after a decision has been made, that just makes it that much tougher. And I think the more credibility that our P&Z staff has, and I think our P&Z staff, by the way, uh, 
is very credible. I think they do a heck of a lot of work. I, I've worked with each one of those guys and girls. And uh, I can tell you sometimes we spent two, three hours reviewing facts and, and, and things coming up or, or things that we're going to rule on or things that might happen to the county in the future. They care about this county. So, I mean, I don't think you're going to find another group of people that spends that kind of time that really care about the outcome of this county. They just want to make the right decisions, and they want to base their decisions on uh, proper legal background and pro proper information. And as you know, we've had Mr. Shubin here. He's made statements. Well, you can look at it this way, you can look at it this way. But, you know, you can get a lot of different uh, opinions. If you get five different attorneys, you might get five different opinions. But if they have access to, to an attorney that's specializing in, in what they need and it takes some of the burden off our staff, uh, I, and they follow it through to the county commission level. So when the PNZ is ruled on something and it comes to the county commission, that's substantiated by that attorney that gave them information to help rule on that. And it was kind of an untold thing in the past that if staff didn't recommend it, you didn't even go forward. You're going to be out of your mind. You know, you had a hard enough time getting approved when staff recommended it, let alone going forward when they didn't recommend it. You know, now things have changed because, you know, we've been more open. We bring forth more information. Uh, some things were never questioned. They were just never questioned. And, and now we're finding out that some things that are questioned make good sense. Uh, you know, right. and you commissioners made that possible for us to be able to bring those things forward, not be intimidated by the fact that we're not afraid to come up here and speak our piece and ask questions because you've let us do that. And that's a privilege indeed. But we're working to try and make this a better county with you all. And that's what the Growth Awareness Committee did with those pending ordinances. And, uh, you know, Miss Bowden and Gary Wheeler and, and Wesley Davis, uh, actually, he, he helped me uh, push those pending ordinances through. And you guys looked at them all on the desk and staff read them over. And, you know, we were all in made, favor of that. You made your point, Mr. Pellman. All right. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'd just like to mention, I didn't mean to uh, say that they weren't good things. I wanted to say that there was a lot of work related to and Once they're passed, how do they mesh with another ordinance? Procedurally, how do we handle it? What do we do? How do we inform people other than the hopper? Um, and how do we transition? That's what I was discussing. I didn't say they weren't good ideas. I'm not saying I agreed with all 13 of them. But um, I think they were, for the most part, very good ideas. But it did create a lot of work um, f for the betterment of the community. Well, we need some direction. And Mr. Bowden, do you have a recommendation on this? Um, not really. I think this has been a good discussion. I um, think that the commission needs to um, weigh in on this. I don't wish to carry this um, further uh, without, um, you know, a reason to do that. Mr. Okay. Chairman. Yes, sir. Uh, um, a couple things, and it's been some very good debate, and, and quite frankly, um, you know, where PNZ is on a, on the, 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 a weekly basis with their decisions is, is difficult. But, you know, we were sitting here at the last meeting making some decisions based on some uh, events that happened in some of the lives of the individuals in the legal department. Uh, since then, there has been some um, closure, if you will, and... Um, and so, therefore, as far as us needing to get some outside counsel to step us through, we, we were looking basically at an open-ended, uncertain book. And now that we're past that, I think that we need to take a step back. And I think the first thing we ought to try is to do perhaps what um, Mr. Baird suggested. And that is that if, if PNZ would like to know basically reasons why they can uh, they get reasons why they can approve, then if they want, perhaps in a separate section, see if they, why they do not have to or why they can deny. I don't, you know, that may be an avenue that we can pursue and it will not cost the taxpayers any more money. Um, and I, I think that that probably should be the first step to see how that works before we go out and hire staff like Mr. Christopher suggested or something. Any, so. Any other comments? Uh, I, 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 I you make a good point, Wesley. I, I also would like to throw into this conversation that I've talked to Will, I don't know, a year ago about uh, additional help in his office. And he mentioned, if I'm not mistaken, if I am, correct me, Will, but, you know, you're, you're looking at that, in fact, have the facilities for that expansion. In the, but I, I'd like to suggest that you start looking now 
and 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 get someone on board. Uh, we're, we're a few months away from over there, but even if we get them earlier, we ought to be able to find some place for them to work and get set up and, and start getting in the in the loop. Where you know that that's a suggestion. Um, but um, I, I know that that you know there's a lot of overwork going on down there. That you're you're burdened, and I I know that. Anybody can walk in your office and see that. So, uh, any other comments? Any direction? Somebody want to? Make a motion. Just on when staff brings the um, backup to the PNZ, would it would it help any if they did not include a recommendation that they just listed option one, two, three, four without a recommendation? Therefore, you don't feel pressured to go with with staff recommendation. Would you rather just have options and not a recommendation? I find that very interesting. There are other counties that do handle it that way, and it's an interesting concept, and it's something we could try. I understand how you feel if staff is recommending something, there's a hesitancy to go against staff recommendation. So if we pulled the recommendation and just gave options, you have the option to do this, to do this, to do this, and then there's no pressure to, to follow a recommendation. I I don't think there's any pressure when you read a recommendation to follow. In fact, we disagree with staff. They had probably one of the strongest arguments I've heard Mr. Keating make since uh, I've ever worked with him was opposing our Ag PD, and it passed, I think, almost unanimously with PNZ, and it passed unanimously with this board. So I, I don't see recommendations by staff as being a threat or being something that would intimidate you to move that way, but, but at least you know clearly where staff stands. The downside to that is, is perhaps in a legal issue, they could show that that was staff's recommendation. But I think generally, if you read the material, you get what the recommendation is before you get to it anyway. Yeah. One thing, I, Donna Keys, Mr. Mensing, uh, Mensing, um, he, I, I think he's under misconception that we're trying to get rid of Will Collins. And, as far as I'm concerned, if you took some work away from Will and let us have him more, I'd be happy. Uh, so Mr. Mensing misunderstood. I have, I have heard, uh, I have heard those rumors, and I, say, I, I, I think that's exactly what they are. I don't think there's any substance uh, or foundation to them at all about Mr. Collins. Uh, uh, personally, I think Will Collins is one of the finest people I've known, and does a good job. But uh, but the uh, the only thing that, that I would take uh, uh, issue with with what Mr. Mensing said is that uh, I see nothing wrong with questioning anybody, whether they be staff or whether they be commissioners or whether they be P and Z. That's how our system works, and I think it's important that you ask the questions and disagree and debate the issues. That's that's what the United States is all about in our form of government. But I do agree. I think uh, Mr. Collins does need some assistance. And I think he needs to. He needs more free time uh, to take care of business than he has currently. Mr. Christopher, in case there was any question, I fully agree with Mrs. Keys on what she said about Mr. Collins. Uh, while we're talking about the staff paper, and I think certainly try what Mr. Baird said, I'd also like to see in the staff paper an attorney's initials on the on the staff paper, which shows that the attorney has reviewed it and approved it, and also. If there is a major legal issue, written discussion on that issue, rather than simply, uh, if we raise it, it'll be discussed. But uh, identify if there are major legal issues, and then a half a page discussion of that legal issue, uh, and, and make clear that the paper was approved by the attorneys. Uh, and I don't know if that yeah, is think, always the case. No, that, that's a great. I don't. I don't think Will would have a problem. I think that's a good idea. We we do that on the agenda, and you could even have a section on the back called legal. I think that would be fine with us. I think it's a good idea. Hmm. Oh, well, this has been a good discussion, and hopefully um, we can add some comfort level to the P and Z that staff. Um, I have to say, staff is really um, articulate. And a lot of these um, uh, issues that come before, in fact, most of them are very complex. And uh, we are lay people. We are not the experts. We just have to weigh both sides. And I think that they want a more balanced side. For sure, um, staff does need to give a recommendation. But they can give options. 
and maybe that's what you want, along with sign-off that the uh, legal staff has seen it and given some input if input was necessary, and, and then we'll all be happier when we move into our new building. Okay. We'll have more space. And uh, I, we have a consensus. Do we need a motion to, to clarify any of this or we're going to move forward? I, I, I don't think we need, Mr. Chairman, don't think a motion needs to be made in this instance. I think that we ought to give staff uh, we, they've got the consensus now. Let them be creative in implementing it. And if we have any issues, we can come back and tweak that again. I only have one question. If you do want to hire someone for, if Will does want to hire someone um, earlier, I, I can do a budget amendment taking out a contingency. If you want to make that recommendation, he can start working on it. If you want us I, to do that, I, I, you know, I'm, as one commissioner, I, I, I know Will needs additional an additional attorney. I, I really believe that. And, and I can't see prolonging the inevitable. I mean, we got, if we had to, we could put something in conference room A. I mean, we can find a place for an attorney okay. if you can find the right guy that find fits your standards well. <clears throat> I don't know what's the. You can't make a, a motion yet, can you? No, but we can get a consensus. <laughs> <laughs> if I could, the move, the, this would move faster. Oh, <laughs> I'll make that motion for you, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> I'll second that. We have a motion and a second to uh, uh, recommend a will to move forward on obtaining another lawyer. And uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Like sign motion carries 5-0. Thank you, Sandra. And Thank you're you. next also. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we had a, I had a meeting at the, um, mm -hmm. in Fort Pierce at the Treasure Coast Council of Local Governments, and um, Mr. Baird, our county uh, manager, did an ex excellent um, talk on um, what we were doing here and brought everybody up to speed. This is four counties, um, Martin, St. Lucie, Indian River, and Okeechobee, plus all the municipalities in that county. And um, they are heavily, Martin and St. Lucie counties lobbying um, Washington. Uh, they have been doing this for some time on water and other issues, and um, we would like to join in that effort if my schedule can be arranged to do that in um, in February, there they would like a commissioner from each county to go up together. Martin and St. Lucie have already authorized for one of their commissioners or two to go up, and we'd like us to go up as a group and and have Mrs. Bowden represent us or another commissioner if she's not available. I'll move. Oh, I'm sorry, I can't. <laughs> I'll do that for you. Yeah, though. no, I think that's a great idea. Um, we <coughs> more and more we certainly understand that um, we can't live in a vacuum. There's decisions being made for us that um, affect our destiny, and uh, we need to be not on the tip of that spear, clearly. And um, Commissioner Bowden, if you can do it, um, I'd love to see you go. Okay, Is there a motion? Yes, yeah, so moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Motion carries 5-0. Solid Waste Disposal District Approval. Mr. Chairman, amendments. if I could, just before we leave real quick, yep. just, I just wanted to give you an update. Um, it's been uh, an, a, a tedious task, if you will, um, to, uh, to... Working with a new commission? No. no to, to, I was, I'm working on the issue with 512 yeah. and so the Sebastian River. Okay. Um, I've got a, a group of, of questions, and, and uh, I've got the parties involved working on that. Um, then I just wanted to say that uh, it's been difficult to get it through the holidays, but things are starting to pick up speed a little bit now. And of course, I would be remiss if I didn't take a little bit of time just to get, just to, to just just yeah. if I could. Well, everybody's got his jacket on. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, Commissioner Davis is just worn out with joy. You know, it is. It's it's great to be a Florida Gator. I just wanted to, to say that. So. <laughs> so, Are there a football team? Uh, yes. <laughs> All right, are you done now? Oh, man, that felt good. <laughs> All right. Solid Waste Disposal District meetings, uh, the minutes for a meeting of November 7, 2006. Move, Move to approve. Second. 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 Motion to second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Like sign. Motion carries 5-0. Meeting of November 14, 2006. Minutes? Move approval. Second. second. We have a motion to second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Like sign. Motion carries. Payment request by Florida Power and Light to relocate a segment of its power line at the county landfill site. That's found on pages 281 through 282. Move to approve. approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Like sign. Motion carries. And the annual financial report memorandum dated December 19, 2006, found on 283 to, through 293. Move approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. 5-0.
and we're adjourned. Thank you.